Support Roller March Unfiltered. Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. As Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Folks, attorney Jaya Person Lynn is scheduled to be sentenced on Friday after the jury convicted him of one count of willfully resisting, delaying, or obstructing a peace officer. The conviction stems from his January 2019 arrest at the San Bernardino County Courthouse, where he was tased and tackled before being arrested when courtroom deputies didn't believe he was an attorney because he had a dashiki on. Joining me right now is Jaya Person Lynn. Uh, Jaya Person, glad to have you here. This all started because you were wearing dashiki and they didn't believe that you were a lawyer? Yeah, plain and simple. That's it. And, um, you know, thanks for having me. Good to see you. Uh, but that, that's it. Uh, they did not believe me. I told them exactly who I was, what I was there for. And before, I, before the video that you showed uh, started, I tried to pull out my bar card to show them I'm, in fact, an attorney, but I did not get that opportunity. Before that, he pushed me. So they hit you with willfully resisting, delaying, or obstructing a peace officer. Um, and they want to see you in jail for a year because of a shirt you're yeah, wearing. That's what I'm facing. That's what I'm facing. And at the trial, they recognized it was not resisting. Although you hear him on the audio saying, are you going to stop resisting? They know I never resisted. Um, and so at the trial, it was for delaying or obstructing. So at the part of the video you just showed, when um, he put his hands on me the second time, 
and I put my hand on his and, and his hand left my chest. That is the act, the specific act that the jury said delayed or obstructed him in the lawful performance of his duty. And that three second act is the act that I was convicted of delaying or obstructing him in his duty. So what the jury said is the officer can put hands on you and you're supposed to stand there and just take it. That's exactly what they said. It's it's basically just the um the us realizing that the Dred Scott case is still good law, at least in San Bernardino, San Bernardino County, in which the Supreme Court of the United States uh, wrote, and it's still there on the books today, that for uh, more than a century we were regarded as inferior beings and so inferior that we could be reduced to slavery for our own benefit and that uh, a black man had no rights that a white man was bound to respect. So that being good law, that being the state of the law, makes sense why I was convicted. Um, but if I was actually a true full citizen of this nation, I would not have been even charged. That officer would have been charged for a battery and assault with a deadly weapon when he shot me with the taser. Uh, are you concerned after the jury uh, took three seconds and uh, convicted you uh, that, uh, and, and who, first of all, who determines what your sentence is going to be? Is it the judge or is it the jury? It's the judge that allowed the jury to act on that. The whole thing from the second I walked through the doors of the courtroom until the time I was tased was under two and a half minutes. But the judge... Uh, enumerated nine different acts from that one uh, charge in those two and a half minutes to allow the jury to try and convict me on. So they didn't convict me on the other eight, um, but they convicted me on that one act, which, and it was, it, it took the jury seven hours of deliberation, and it was only about seven hours of testimony. So that's a long time to testify. Um, that's, a, that's a long time to deliberate with such short testimony, uh, but when the judge allowed all of those acts to come in, they figured they had to convict me of something, and they ultimately did. And then when I talked to a couple jurors afterwards, one of them told me it wasn't the act of pushing his hand away from you that was the, the guilty act. It was the fact that once you did that, it made him focus on you more so he followed you out of the, the courtroom, even though I was following their instructions to leave, the fact he followed and nobody asked him to follow is what made me delay him. That was their actual reasoning that they stated why they convicted me. That makes no sense whatsoever. It makes no sense at all, because what they're saying is, if there's an officer on the streets doing DUI patrol, but then they pull me over for using my cell phone while driving. I have now obstructed this officer from doing his DUI patrol duty. And that is the kind of logic that the jury came, the jury of no black people. We were in Rancho Cucamonga. It's eight or 9% black, uh, it's 10% Asian. But out of the 24 jurors in the jury pool, there were zero blacks and six Asians. Um, and one of the jurors, the juror that told me his reasoning, uh, he, he actually told the judge before the trial that he's not a good juror for this because he believes police are right all the time. So if I didn't do exactly what they said, I'd be wrong. And he even told me if, if the cop pushed him like that, he would have removed his hand. But that's him telling me. In his eyes, I'm less than him because if it's right, it's right for him to do it, but not for me to do it. So um, you will learn your fate tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time, correct? Yes, sir. From the same judge that allowed that juror to stay on and allowed those nine acts. And the thing about this uh, statute, it's specific to an officer. So there could be two officers there and... I have to delay a specific officer, not just law enforcement in general. So four of the nine acts that uh, the judge enumerated for the jury to decide on were not even against Deputy Barry, who was the white deputy in the video that uh, got physical with me and, and shot me with the taser. 
four of them were against the other deputy who testified, I should not have been arrested. I should not have been tased. Um, and but that's imagine that you had a black deputy saying I shouldn't have been arrested or tased. You had a black attorney saying I shouldn't have been arrested and tased in myself. And then a white officer saying it was OK to do in the, of the courtroom. And that's why he pushed me was maintaining the security of the courtroom. And so it's you know, I don't get it. He also testified when we walked into the vestibule. He had no plans on arresting me. And what I got arrested for happened about a minute before we walked into the vestibule. So for the judge to even allow the jury to uh, make a decision on that was a miscarriage of justice. And then obviously them convicting me was a miscarriage of justice. But a reminder that uh, regardless of what the law say related to our rights, the status that we had uh, when the Declaration of Independence was written, when they said, when Thomas Jefferson wrote, all men are created equal, while holding slaves, that meant from the foundation of this nation until this day, we are less than in this country. And if if that wasn't enough, we have the Constitution, we have the Dred Scott opinion, and even up until my conviction, it's, it's just a reminder of our status here. All right, then. Uh, well, look, we certainly appreciate you joining us. We'll, we'll wait to see uh, what this decision is tomorrow. Jaya, personally, and we appreciate it, brother. Good luck. Thanks a lot, Roland. I greatly appreciate you, brother. Thank you very much. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.